Hello everyone, this is Eth Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, just going on a steamroll of recording videos today, um, because I don't have all the time in the world. So as you can see, we, I only have again four units left to max on Hero Merit, so we're doing tap battles today to get a little more HM. Kappa. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Tap Battles giving HM is just a whatever at this point, but we're just gonna get started here. A good old 96 to 100. Blind run. Trying to go expert mode shenanigans. I don't ex expect this to take too long, but we'll see. Today, I don't know what to talk about. There's the new Heroes banner with the uh, Fates Beast units, I guess. What to say? So, if I can remember the banner at least. There's Keaton. Who else? Kaden, Valoria, and Selkie. There we go. So, I don't know what to really talk about from the banner. It just seems kind of like they took some popular beast units from Choose Your Legend standings and then they just decided to uh, make release them in a beast unit's banner pretty early. I was surprised they did it this early. I was expecting them to hold it off till later, but I guess they're doing it now to get that dank uh, cash flow, am I right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. A lot of them are kind of whatever. Valoria definitely looks like she's a potential demote for sure. Doesn't look too amazing. Keaton is definitely interesting though. Is he's basically a beast beast version a beast infantry version of Sword Heart because he can double in both phases, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'm just gonna try and focus a little bit here. Maybe I can finish it. Nope, game over. <laughs> I was like, maybe I can finish it as strength first try. I would have if I wasn't trying to also commentate on top. That's the thing with. That's like the only reason why I do this. It's definitely more difficult to commentate while trying to do tap battles. Not gonna lie. But this stage definitely is not too difficult at all. But anyways, back to the beast units, so... Keaton's definitely interesting, because he has special spiral as well. Um, but... Being able to double both phases, and because he's an infantry unit, the transforming effect is basically the Wodao effect. So, combine that with like Vantage and stuff, and you have a pretty decent unit. It didn't look like he had an amazing attack though. It seemed like... Well, I say that, but I feel like he's gonna be able to... With enough um, building, like maybe with Fierce Stance Seal or something. You could get him to 50 or 60 attack. So, that would do alright with Vantage. And like, I don't know, Glimmer or Moonbow, I guess. But it just seems like reusing something that we already have in the game. And of course it's on a sword unit, and there's plenty of tanky blues out there, or even just tanky reds, or even some of the most tanky greens. So, I don't know. We'll see how well he does in the meta. I just completely missed the lane. Feels bad, man. <laughs> um... Again, Valoria doesn't look like she has anything too special. I believe her special weapon effect is she grants minus two cooldown at the start of turn one to an, an ally that's ally supported with her or something that's adjacent. I'm not entirely too clear on the actual effects, what it actually does, so we'll just have to wait. How did I miss the lane again? Gosh dang it. <laughs> This went from easy to me just just making dumb mistakes, just missing the lane, like how do you do that? <laughs> Maybe because I'm... I don't know, whatever. 
I guess I will skip Caden because I think Caden's the winner out of this banner. But we're going to go to Selkie, who's also pretty decent. I don't remember her entire skill set, but she has a an ability built into her weapon where she boosts her stats individually equal to 50% of the difference between her and the enemy stats. So say if we're just doing like speed, if she has like 42 speed and the enemy has 48 speed, if I understand the weapon effect correctly, the weapon will give her plus 3 speed because the difference between them is 6 and half of that is 3. So she'll get plus 3 speed for free basically, just based off of stats, which is pretty cool. I don't remember the exact wording. How did I miss the lane again? <laughs> okay, I don't know what, what I'm doing right now. I'm just missing the lane. You know what's worse than tapping out of time? Tapping in time, but in the wrong place. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting effect. Definitely not game breaking at all. Conceptually, I think this would benefit the most for like, in terms of speed and maybe bulk i'm not sure because the thing with this weapon is the max is plus eight for any particular stat so if like say she has i don't know 10 res and enemy has 26 res then she'll get the full effect out of her weapon and get plus eight res but if she has like 10 res and the enemy has like 40 she's still only gonna get plus eight I guess to keep it balanced because you can also stack buffs on her too so like drives and spurs and such so there's that we'll see I'm pretty sure they just gave her effects like that because she definitely plays well in choose your legends people like their beast units um, but yeah, I don't remember the rest of her skills. I don't think there's anything too special in this banner. Actually, I think I just remember. She has a B skill called Sabotage Attack, which is, I believe, if you have at least three more res than any enemy on the field, and that enemy is adjacent to an ally, then they get minus seven to their attack. So you can think of the Think of it like a versus knight, but the uh, condition is based on res, and the effect is minus, a tevin, minus 7 attack. So I think in particular that's probably only really useful for like arena, and maybe like ether aids maybe. Because debuffing for attack in this meta is pretty huge, because attack is skyrocketing. Like it's pretty normal now to see units of over 70 attack. It's pretty normal, so it's definitely good for like tanks and stuff to be able to get that extra debuff in. And without having to like rely on attack smoke or maybe, I don't know, attack ploy or whatever. It's definitely interesting. Not game breaking anyway, it's just another set of skills. So, okay, I did not expect that. Got spooked by the diagonal movement. This might be a long video. I don't know. Just depends on how hard I goof. So I don't know. Selkie. She'll probably be decent because she's again one of the more popular units off based off of Choose Your Legends. So they're obviously going to make her pretty good. That's what usually happens in this game. And then last but not least we have Caden. So really the only thing I'm looking at with Caden is his weapon. I just want to also point out there that Selkie and Caden are cav beasts. So there's that. I don't know how for Caden's effect, I think it's good that he's a cav. And basically the effect is he grants combat buffs equal to the field buffs I believe that he has to allies within two spaces. So that's pretty huge if you think about it, at least if I understand the weapon effect correctly. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't know why they would do this, because there's no mention of... You can stack this. So if you think about it, 
Say Caden has plus six to all stats. Then any ally within two spaces automatically gets plus six to all stats. And if you think of a unit like Erica, who uh, kinda basically doubles her buffs based on buffs from her allies, so if she's buffed for plus six to all stats too, with Caden's effect and Siglin's special refine, she has plus 18 to all stats. Technically speaking, you can't get plus 21 to all stats unless you have two legendary Zeras <laughs> uh, dancing. So I don't really think of that as consistent and so not probably won't be too viable there. I don't I probably already goofed already, but I don't know because I'm not I, yeah, I goofed already. Okay, the boss battle is kind of challenging because I don't know what to expect yet. I haven't seen all the rotations of the patterns, so I just have to get used to it as I rant about Kaden. So, that's of one Kaden. Uh, I think the most optimal setup would be using two Kadens because you can use tactics because there's, he's a cav. If he was infantry, it'd be a little more difficult to go meme because... Uh, you, you, the unit you would be trying to meme would probably have to have be not infantry, and there's a lot of infantry units, so I don't know, it'd be a little more difficult. But yeah, if you have two Cadence buffed with plus six to all stats via like tactics, and your target unit, um, I don't know, is also buffed with plus six to all stats, that's plus 18 to all stats already. And then, I don't know, if you have your other unit as male Corrin or something <laughs> with ally support and the Yato special refine, it's another plus six to all stats. I really do think there's a lot of meme content to be had there. It's really strong. And with tactics, it's pretty consistent. Of course, you still have to stay close to each other, but that's the whole premise of the build because the Yato Refine and Caden's Weapon both need the allies to be within two spaces anyways, so... There's that! Yeah, I, th I think Caden's the winner out of this banner. We'll see though, we haven't gotten stats or anything. Maybe they might have some game-breaking stats, but from the looks of it, I didn't do much analysis on the trailer for stats, but... It looked like Valoria had really meh attack, so if she gets demoted, she also, she's also in the colorless pool, so it's kind of a whatever to me. She has like close defense and ward beasts or something. And I think Luna is a special, I guess. I'm definitely getting spooked by this, uh, by this setup. I think it's because I'm not expecting to have to tap like Gordon. I, I can't, I can't remember who it is. It's someone. I'm expecting to not have to tap right away. Oh, it, it's Drog. I barely saved that one, I think. <laughs> I keep getting screwed over by that diagonal movement, man. I think I screwed up on Abel there, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm using my peripheral vision now, so. I don't know. Definitely, actually, kind of a challenging boss battle to do, like, blindly. Once you know the patterns, like, how Marf is going to move, I think I screwed up on Drog there. I'm pretty darn sure of that. I, I might have even just screwed up on that last hit there. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. I'm just gonna skip the, uh, Hot Springs animation because I mean we've seen it so many times already. We don't need to see it. Yep, yeah, it was probably one of those hits. Gosh darn it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, definitely not feeling the best today either. Definitely probably coming down from like the cold, the common cold or something. We'll see. I'll still probably be recording and commentating, but I might not. It's definitely hard to find time to always do live comms every week, multiple times a week, for a lot of videos. And again, I just do this for the fun of it, and to just practice.
talking because I'm not particularly the greatest at it. Looking back at my older YouTube videos, that kind of just shows me how, where I've, how far I've come ever since I started commentating. Holy cow. <laughs> the throwbacks. But... I don't know what to talk about now. What else is there? There's, uh... I could briefly talk about the March update incoming where you can inherit four skills from you instead of, uh, three. That's something. I guess they did it because... I'm presuming they did it because there's tier four skills now. And they didn't want it to be awkward where you have to either get two copies of that unit to inherit that tier four skill, or you would have to... In Inherit a skill from someone else to also, like, say for Death Blow 4, you would have to inherit at least Death Blow 1 from someone else to get Death Blow 4. So I'm not sure, but it's definitely going to make some other units better in fodder value. If we just take one of the more recent units, Valentine Ike, uh, which, who has, oh, I already screwed up again, uh, who has Distant Counter Special Fighter. And special fighter, or even speed wave if you're into waves. I'm not. <laughs> um, then post post uh, the March update, you'll be able to inherit both distant counter and special fighter to an armored unit, which is pretty cool. There's some other units like that. Legendary Hector, you can inherit distant counter and vengeful fighter, which is nice. If you have a Takumi, you can inherit close counter and threaten speed three. <laughs> Kappa. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be useful. It's just a nice thing to have. Because I, I know there's people out there when, like, Winter Tharger came out, they gave their unit close counter and, like, Vengeful Fighter 2. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of awkward looking at it now that we can all be able to inherit four skills soon. But, uh, or even like Brave Ike, you can inherit, uh, Steady Breath and Ether. Gosh dang it, my phone again. Alright, this is incredibly awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I figured I was like, I'm not going to be able to hit that. Nope. Alright. What do we even talk about at this point? I guess... The upcoming meme videos, I guess. <laughs> Eventually, they're gonna happen. Hopefully, when it's water season, I'm actually, I have some time. Because it will require me to uh, get like Sumner support on Nino for the maximum memes. Um, it's definitely gonna be fun. So, the whole premise is again, close counter Nino, but it's 2019. And the units are a lot scarier now. So we have to up the ante, obviously. We can't just use the old 54 defense Nino. That tanked Black Luna. We have to go a little bit more. So we're just going to be stacking a lot of uh, free-to-play accessible buffs like Spur Defense. And you'll see what happens. Just say I'm gonna be running Ignis on Nino's special. <laughs> It'll be fun. Unless you just run into a bunch of like special fighter units or something. Definitely gonna be funny. Um, going to have quite a bit more than just uh, 54 defense. So even off a defense tile, she'll be able to tank quite a bit. It'll be definitely interesting. Um, ironically, because of the way I have the setup right now planned out, Nino is going to have a lot more defense than Rez. So dragons are going to attack Rez, which is uh, not good. The worst matchup is against, I think, Halloween Murr, especially if like Special Fighter. And let's see if we can not goof here. I'm probably going to see somehow again. I think I screwed up. I screwed up. Yep. Ah, this is going to be a long video, isn't it? Unnecessarily, too. I'm just making really silly mistakes. There's that incoming. Uh, the ultimate Tiki. 
is gonna is still a work in progress. I still need to go summon on red quite a bit. Need quite a bit more merges, but when it's done, it'll be funny for sure. I think she'll still be relevant by the time I finish. <laughs> uh, Breath of Fog is just is, is pretty good. I'm just making silly mistakes now. This is gonna be like, I don't know, 40 minute video or something dumb like that. Just because I, I took too long to record this video, I think. Because I haven't done tap battles in a while, again. So it's kind of like mostly playing by just looking at their relative positions and tapping accordingly. So if they come either in random bursts or like split up bursts of units, it's definitely easy for me to just miss one. But I think I have the main stage pretty much down as long as I tap the lane. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it basically. Tap battles is definitely kind of meh. In the recent update, they changed tap battles, so, gosh dang it, I tapped the wrong lane. <laughs> um, it changed it, so they removed a lot of orbs from doing the stages, and then they made them into quests where you get five orbs. Which is kind of a deceiving thing from IS, but I guess it's to encourage people to play the whole game mode? I don't know. I mean, if you wanted the orbs, you still had to go through it, so I'm not sure why they did that. But, I, I just, I don't know, I wish there was something you could get for S-ranking everything. Because a lot of people just furiously tap the screen. <laughs> and it works. Um, I don't know, it's just, the game mode's pretty dead. They haven't not done much to it ever since the few minor changes they've made. Alright. Alright, alright. I really don't know what to talk about. There's not much to talk about in the game at this point. It's mostly just going through... The daily grind, and doing your quests, and all the game modes that are going on, like Tempest Trials. There's not really much to do. It's basically wait until April, because that's what I'm saving up for. See if the Legendary, uh, legendary, legendary <laughs> banner is actually good. Hopefully it is. Uh, on blue at least. Can I just not screw up once for once? Okay, I think I figured out the rhythms. Yeah, I think I figured it out. It should make this a little bit easier. Now that I know the rhythm. Hopefully. The thing about these videos is that it gets progressively worse the longer it takes for me to clear. I think I got it as long as I tap properly. Because now I know the rhythm, so it's a lot easier. Oh, I almost screwed that up. Another common thing I do is screw up right at the end. I don't know why, I just do that a lot. I think that's it. Oh, now I gotta do casual. It's gonna be so hard. <laughs> I don't know. Casual's a lot harder for me than expert. With expert, I guess it's the fact that I have to keep like a rhythm flowing between the lanes rather than just tapping the same button or same area over and over again. So then I sometimes like preemptively tap when on casual. And there we go. Woo, I'll be back when I complete casual mode. Alright, I think I did it. It was actually first try. Derp. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> of course. I think it's because I got got the rhythm down. But uh that's like once again, chat battles all S ranked again for no darn reason other than just doing it. It's kind of like Tempest Trials at this point, just going for top 1k. Should probably burn some stamina before I go do the extra stages. Um, and there's a Grand Conquest going on after Tempest Trials, it'll be forging bonds. It just never ends, does it? <laughs> it takes so long to get anywhere. But I guess we probably should be getting summoning tickets and stuff, so there's that I guess. But that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.